Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me to midterm conference of Society of Defense Anesthesiologists and Intercommand CME. The topic for today's discussion is role of digital technology in anesthesia. E-learning anesthesia is why. I'm bringing greetings from my institution, Anandapuri Hospitals, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. I'm also associated with uh, uh, the following projects, my own YouTube channel named uh, Anesthesia Tools. And I also run a website for anesthesia teaching learning, www.onlineanesthesiatools.com. I'm also a part of uh, the uh, webinar campus, the online webinar forum for acute medicine specialities. And I am the coordinator academics of Indian College of Anesthesiologists running ICA webinars on all Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Indian time since last one year. This is a photograph of my presentation in Delhi itself in 2019 BZ on the same topic, e-learning in anesthesia. What is BZ? It is before Corona that because COVID-19 has taken our lives for a toss. And now we usually discuss about lockdown, crammed up COVID ICUs, but yes, our classrooms have become empty because of COVID concerns and social distancing norms. So classroom teaching as of now is very risky and it's less practical these days. Of course, the second wave is almost through. But yes, uh, pain is inevitable. Yes, suffering is optional. So it's up to us to really decide whether we should continue to suffer or find out new modes of teaching, learning, and training in anesthesia. If you really want to do something, you will find a way. And if you don't, you will find an excuse. Training in anesthesia happens in the following ways conventionally. Yes, our classroom teaching, bedside teaching in the operating theater, the postgraduates and the academic enthusiasts can find literature in their library in the form of textbooks, journals. CMEs and conferences do have their role in getting our academics updated and our practice also refined to uh, be up to date. We have uh, lots of presentation softwares like Microsoft PowerPoint, Prezi is a useful software and for MacBook users, Keynote is a wonderful gadget to make presentations for your teaching or sharing your thoughts in academic uh, things. So that uh, nowadays the classes are no more uh, monotonous. So you can have uh, digital projections inside your classes to make uh, captivating presentations, make it engaging and appealing. I'm sure the softwares we use for this purpose are simple, easy to learn, and yes, they are power pack too. Here's a picture of a conference. Uh, this is actually an international conference where uh, my mentor, my professor, Dr. Madhusudan Abadhyay is talking. And physically I was not there. Actually, I would have loved to be there, but it will cost me dearly an international travel, accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. And even if it happens in a big city in India, many won't be able to physically attend. I'm speaking about BC before COVID also, and it's very much applicable in these days. And these presentations will be missed by a lot. And even if you have a wonderful presentation, wonderful panel discussion or debate on stage, it becomes a thing of the past. But see, the quotation says, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. But that replay is happening only in your minds. It's not 
a reality. So if you want to relive the past or relive a wonderful demonstration or presentation, it is not possible, though our mind will be telling a dil mange mo. And how do we come across these limitations? Yes, it is definitely through a digital recording, transmission, and replay, which can um, uh, re uh, solve the solution to an extent. Not fully, I agree. Okay, so the time constraints, the travel time and uh, the accommodation and other things, the, those constraints will be overcome when we go for a hybrid meeting or a virtual meeting. Plus, this also offers the user at the end of the, we are speaking about the audience end to suit their diurnal pattern of learning. See, personally, I believe early morning hours is the best time to read, to make an article, to prepare for a presentation, etc., etc. But definitely there will be some people who would love to do this in the late night hours as well. Of course, I know uh, some very busy people are doing presentations or preparing presentations while they are traveling in the metro or their car. Of course, not while driving, I believe. But uh, these are exceptions for general public or general uh, normal audience. Learning happens at a particular time of the day. There is a definite diurnal pattern of learning. And during a physical conference, we get to see or interact with a limited number of experts. If you want to bring in uh, the pioneer in capnography who is sitting right there in US, every time making him come over to our particular town for a particular conference may not be possible. But once you upgrade yourself to a virtual meeting or even a hybrid meeting, it becomes easier than ever before. So anesthesia learning, like uh, our, even our school curriculum, is going after new tools, new ways tools, and anesthesia teaching itself becomes digital. So this is why we need to have e-learning anesthesia. E-learning anesthesia basically provides you with three important buttons, play button, pause button, and stop button. And we can have animations, graphics to imp impress upon the audience the, to convey the material in a better way, visual way. Maybe audio also we can use, say for example, hemodynamic variations, and it can be delivered right on to your smartphone. I know some of you may be uh, watching this uh, webinar through a smartphone, YouTube on your smartphone or a tablet. This is a reality. Now the teaching learning happens anytime, anywhere, depending on the convenience at the user end. But I'd like to point out a few things which cannot be taught on a physical classroom. Suppose I want to teach how to do the anesthesia machine checkout to a, an, in an institution where you may have maybe 40 or 60 postgraduate to bring them all inside the operating room to demonstrate the smaller things or each finer things about machine checking protocol is almost impractical. But the moment I do a video, maybe taking a little extra effort and put it on a digital platform like YouTube, then it can be accessed through different people in different times. They can always come back, rewind, again, see it. They can scrutinize each step. So all these are possible and they can see magnified view of the machine combined with the graphics to relate with the graphic and the real time equipment. All these are possible once we change this teaching module into a digital one. So this is the video that I uploaded in my YouTube channel and it is going on well. This video was shot uh, during my term in uh, Sultan Qaboos University, Muscat. Actually, Muscat also provided me with one more opportunity where I was asked to present the patient safety precautions that we do in our department in a meeting where even a poster or PowerPoint presentation would have conveyed the material, but in this uh, 13 to 14 minutes video, 
we actually showcase the whatever we do when a patient is coming to our OT right from OT reception to the theater, to how we ship the patient back, how we do the timeout. Everything was packed inside this uh, maybe a 12 to 13 minutes video. And this video was much appreciated on the quality day of uh, Sultan Qaboos University Hospital a few years back. So this is the power of uh, digital media use in a presentation or conveying the idea to an audience. We can use different social media available now, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, because we have a Telegram group of uh, postgraduates in anesthesia to update regarding our academic activities, the forthcoming webinars like that. The video conference platforms like Zoom, WebEx, Teams, everything has become a common man's thing because uh, nobody knew that our academic curriculum, school academics is, uh, will be depending on these applications. And uh, personally, I believe in the second year of uh, COVID affected academic academics, our school teachers, even the kids are very smart in using these applications without much trouble. As I mentioned before, um, as part of Indian College of Anesthesiologists webinars, we have been running uh, webinar programs on all Wednesdays at seven o'clock. And we have completed one year, just uh, a few uh, days back in July 14th. There we had uh, uh, all the world leaders in anesthesia, so different societies of international societies of anesthesia coming together on our virtual platform, interacting uh, to discuss regarding the current uh, prospects of anesthesia and future what prospects. So we were happy that uh, we could host a virtual meeting, uh, bringing almost the, all the world leaders together, including WFSA, ASA, Zamba, Malaysian Association, etc., etc. That was coordinated by Dr. Kumar Belani from uh, University of Minnesota, who is right there in the United States now. As part of that program, we also conducted an uh, academic experiment where we did an online postgraduate quiz, where after a preliminary that was also conducted online, of course, in this COVID era, we don't have much options also. So we selected five quiz teams and uh, we did an online interactive quiz where the uh, quiz was uh, supported with use of an online application where uh, we could get the choices from the teams not only in terms of multiple choice questions, they could also type in their answers. And I believe some of the applications will support uh, their smartphone as voting pad so that they can pinpoint different parts in a diagram so that we can ask them after showing uh, ultrasound picture, point out where is the median now, where is the um, in, in the scaling book, where exactly you want to deposit the drug, et cetera, et cetera, and score it instantly. So which makes life so simple these days. Of course, internet connectivity is a limiting factor. So all the teams and the quiz masters should have a good internet connection, broadband connections. So all things are difficult before they are easy, right? Now we are uh, living in an era where simulation aided advanced training is happening in the field of anesthesia and critical care. An example is the SIMSTAT application promoted by American Society of Anesthesiologists. Even to train the people on resuscitation, there have been many applications to help the candidates practice resuscitation, not on real time situations, but on mannequins with simulated vitals, ECGs, etc. This is the picture of uh, training CPR in our advanced life support, where the more vitals will be shown in a simulated monitor. In fact, uh, we have brought this to our online platform also. One of the webinars uh, we have done, um, online simulation, hemodynamic simulation, along with the cardiac arrest scenarios. So the simulator was with, my, uh, with me and uh, the participant sitting somewhere else in the country was looking at the monitor, simulated monitor on their uh, webinar screen. And they, we were discussing the uh, progress of the mega code. So as uh, the candidates recognized PEA or ventricular fibrillation, they are given their choice. So they were asked to check whether they want to proceed with the shock or CPR. 
so we could manage that successfully so that i think is the order of the day and in fact many of the examinations are getting conducted on virtual platform so at least uh, uh, external examiner will be participating through a video conferencing app maybe in future we may have uh, exclusive online exit exams happening right in india which is very much possible so if you really want to do something you'll find a way if you don't you'll find an excuse so in a nutshell e learning in anesthesia is why because it will enable you with three buttons the play button the pause button the stop button so this is the final message which was actually given by mahatma gandhi any new innovations first they ignore you then they ridicule you then they fight you and then you win that's all from me now we'll uh, go in for q and a session now role of digital technology in training in anesthesia e learning anesthesia is why thank you very much it's me dr sanish signing off thank you thank you very much